Laparoscopic modified radical hysterectomy and staging for uterine papillary serous carcinoma with cervical involvement. The patient is a 47-year-old para-3 who presented with complaints of a brown vaginal discharge. Her history was notable only for three prior cesarean sections and no family history of cancer. Her pelvic exam was significant for a red lesion at the 7 o'clock position on the cervix. By manual exam revealed no parametrial abnormalities, a normal sized uterus, and bilateral adnexa. Endometrial biopsy was positive for a mixed endometrioid and papillary serous carcinoma. Colposcopic guided biopsies revealed a positive ECC with a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma with squamoid features. Preoperative PET CT evaluation revealed no extra pelvic disease. Due to the endocervical involvement, she subsequently underwent laparoscopic modified radical hysterectomy, bilateral salpingoophorectomy, bilateral pelvic and periaortic lymphadenectomy, and omentectomy. A 5 trocar approach is taken. Two 10 mm trocars, one in the umbilicus, one in the suprapubic area, three 5 mm trocars, one in the right lower quadrant, and two on the left to facilitate periaortic lymphadenectomy. A survey of the abdomen and pelvis is performed. There is no gross disease visualized. There are mild intra-abdominal adhesions on the right side. However, a normal appendix, an upper abdomen, is seen. The procedure begins with pelvic washings. Attention is then turned to infracolic omentectomy. The harmonic shears are used as seen here. The specimen is placed in the upper abdomen for retrieval to be demonstrated later. The posterior parietal peritoneum is then opened over the right common iliac artery. This peritoneal incision is then extended cephalad up to the level of the left renal vein. Left periaortic lymphadenectomy is then performed as seen here using both blunt and sharp dissection and the harmonic shears. Identification of the ureter as seen here is crucial during this dissection. The dissection continues cephalad with identification of the IMA. The left renal vein is seen here and left periaortic lymphadenectomy above the level of the IMA is performed in this area. This is an overview of the left side of the periortic region. Right periortic lymphadenectomy is performed in a similar fashion. And then attention is turned to the presacral lymphadenectomy. This is an excellent demonstration of the middle sacral vein coming from the left common iliac vein. Attention is then turned to the pelvis where dissection of the right infundibulopelvic ligament is commenced. The right ureter is identified and seen peristalsing here. The harmonic shears are used to make a window beneath the right IP ligament to facilitate its transection. Attention is turned to the left where the broad ligament is opened and the pelvic sidewall is opened. A similar dissection occurs on the left with identification of the left ureter on the medial aspect of the broad ligament seen peristalsing here. Thus, the left IP ligament can be transected safely utilizing the ligature device. To commence the radical hysterectomy, the avascular spaces are developed. Here, the rectovaginal space is opened using blunt and sharp dissection. The anterior cul-de-sac and vesicovaginal space is also subsequently developed. The right superior vesicle artery is identified here. An overview of the right pelvic sidewall showing the external and internal iliac vessels, the right obturator nerve, as well as the right superior vesicle artery, and the other avascular space, the pararectal space, and the paravescal space are shown. The right uterine artery is identified and transected with the ligature device at the level of the hypogastric. Continued dissection of the parametrium is performed seen here to the level of the rectovaginal space that was developed previously. 
the ureteral artery is then retracted medially to facilitate ureteral tunnel dissection. The ureter is completely mobilized to the level of the bladder and the parametrium is transected. Attention is then turned to the left side. This process repeated in a similar fashion with the left superior vesicle artery being grasped with the grasper and the avascular spaces again being developed. The left uterine artery again transected at the level of the hypogastric and retracted medially to facilitate ureteral dissection. The ureter again is completely mobilized to the level of the bladder. The left parametrium is transected here. Bilateral pelvic lymphadenectomy is performed as described previously. Again, the harmonic shears are implemented for this procedure. The right pelvic sidewall upon completion of pelvic lymphadenectomy is seen here. A sponge stick is then placed in the posterior fornix of the vagina and posterior colpotomy as well as anterior colpotomy are performed with the harmonic shears. The omentum is placed in an endocatch and removed for the anterior colpotomy. The specimen is seen here, having been removed vaginally. A reassessment of the intra-abdominal cavity is performed that shows good hemostasis. Here is an overview of all of the anatomy, particularly the periortic region, with periortic lymphadenectomy above the IMA as well seen here. Her total operative time was 330 minutes with a 100cc blood loss. She was discharged without complication with an indwelling catheter on postoperative day 3. She had urinary retention postoperatively that was treated conservatively until she passed her trial of void on postoperative day 14. Her final pathology revealed a poorly differentiated mixed adenocarcinoma of the uterine isthmus with endometrioid, papillary, mucinous, and undifferentiated areas with 41% myometrial invasion and endocervical involvement up to 83% cervical wall invasion. 28 parotid lymph nodes were obtained, all of which were negative for tumor, and 33 pelvic lymph nodes were obtained with two positive left hypogastric lymph nodes. Her final stage was noted to be a stage 3C uterine papillary serous carcinoma upon further review. Her case was reviewed at the weekly tumor conference where the decision was made to proceed with GOG protocol 209. She has now received seven cycles of cisplatin, adriamycin, and taxol. Her last follow-up was five months postoperatively with no evidence of disease on clinical exam nor CAT scan evaluation.